Well, good morning, everybody. And I see that there's already people in the, the chat. So um, that's always exciting. And today we're going to talk about living in two places. Because actually, in just, uh, um, just over a week, we are headed to Arizona. Now, have anybody that's in the chat, have you lived in two places at one time? You know, maybe it's, oh, Joe's coming over. Joe, say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Joe was my coffee creamer taster the other day. You know, I always can't always get him to get on my live or on my videos, but he was a good sport and he tried the three different kinds of um, vanilla bean. <laughs> Coffee. Oh, you can still see me? Coffee. Yeah, they can see you. <laughs> oh, see? People are saying hi. Hello. <laughs> it's Denise, Nisi. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes when you have a, a channel, um, both people will be on all the time. But Joe, he's a little... He's a little shy, kind of. <laughs> Let you get to know him. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? <laughs> Joe's in a golf tournament tomorrow. So he said he would stop and say hi for just a couple seconds. I don't know how long he'll stay. I, I can stay here the whole time. Baby. Okay, stay. <laughs> yeah, just stay the whole time. <laughs> and he's going to go practice because last tournament in Wyoming before we go to Arizona. And so I'm sure he's been getting it all down. Good chip and put. <laughs> Hi, Laura. How are you this morning? Good to see you. And um, Castle Highs was in earlier, but Brian said that he was just popping in to say hi. Then he had to run and do stuff. So that was so nice of him. And Pafford Homestead is in. And Todd is in. So that's just great. There's lots of people popping in. And this morning, I have my little trusty notebook. And this kind of is just has really helped me getting everything ready to go to um, Arizona. And look who's here. Mary, how are ya? Um, Mary's one of my members. Todd is one of my members. Um, Brian at Castle Hives is one of my members. So pretty soon you'll start to see Nightbot give their links. So that's always a nice thing that it does. And Nisi says that Mr. Handsome won't come into my lives or videos very often either. You know. It's, it's just what what our husbands want or don't want to do. But he was a true sport the other day when he helped with my tasting of coffee creamer because I don't drink coffee. But my vanilla bean um, series just started this week. And so he was a trooper and tried those. So that was so nice of him. Out but, of pressure, baby. Oh, out of pressure. <laughs> So funny. <laughs> but we're getting ready to go to Arizona. So, Jill, what are you doing to get ready to go to Arizona? Cleaning my golf clubs. <laughs> what? <laughs> but have you decided if you're going to bring any tools down? A few. Some of my 18 volt stuff. Okay. Because. If we can bring some stuff down and just leave it, we don't have to bring it back and forth. And so if we have doubles of things, that works out really good. I got lots of doubles. And Shelly is here. Healthy Homestead chick. Um, Doug is her husband. He has his way homestead. So thanks so much, Shelly, for popping in. Hello. So nice of you. <laughs> He's finding the camera. <laughs> backwards, baby. It is backwards <laughs> because... It looks like I'm on one side, but I'm not actually on that side. I'm on the other side. 
but that's the way it works. So <laughs> anything else? What else are you going to bring to Arizona? I don't know. Metal detecting stuff, I suppose. Yeah, because he likes to metal detect down there. Some nice clothes for church. Clothes. Um, some tools. Anything else you thinking? No. Oh, good. I get the rest of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I get to put all my stuff in there. <laughs> That works out perfect. <laughs> I got to go, baby. Oh, he's leaving us already. Well, Joe, have fun golfing. I will. Okay. Bye. <laughs> he's just too funny. Here, you got to move your chair. Good. That way I get more in the center. Ah. Marilyn says, I made your vanilla recipe and it will be ready to give away at Christmas time. Woohoo! Yeah, you can always um, add more vanilla beans if you want it faster. But I'm a very patient person for most things. Not all things, but most things. And so it's easy for me just to do my recipe and have it a few batches going at the same time. So I'm never without vanilla. So... That is interesting. I did have a gal that posted um, on my vanilla bean creamer that she had made the vanilla and it exploded. How can it explode? I don't understand that. You just have your vanilla and you have your alcohol. The, I mean, when I check them to see what they're smelling like after different times, there's no pressure. I don't understand. I don't. The only thing I could think of is that maybe it was someplace where it got really hot, but still... I'm, you know, like, have you ever had um, a bottle of alcohol explode? Never. And the vanilla beans are just sitting in there. It's not like they're fermenting. They're not doing anything. They're just sitting in there. It's kind of like a tincture, you know, the same idea. And so I was just surprised that she said that because it doesn't make any sense to me. You know, I don't know. I don't know what kind of alcohol she is. And I don't know where she got her beans from. So I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting comment, but we're getting ready. Joe's, it's much more easy for Joe to get ready. He has his big box for his clothes. He just folds everything. Actually, he rolls everything up so it doesn't get wrinkled. And then he has like his dress shirts and dress pants that, you know, they can stay on the hangers and just, um, go on top of something in the, the truck, or he can put it in a box and I can always iron them. And then he's going to pick some tools, but that's pretty easy for him. Me, I got a lot of stuff to do. So my trusty notebook has been very helpful for me. I always have some kind of notebook. And in fact, in the front of this, I started writing things for videos. Lynn, one of my subscribers, she's in Texas. So Lynn, when you watch this, hello. She asked if I would do some videos on container gardening. And so I thought um, I easily could. And I could have done it this summer. But by the time she asked me, it really went ahead a lot of time. And I wanted to be able to show the progress of it. And so I have it all written down. So I'm going to do it all. And um, different mixtures of potting soils that are better in pots or better in um, bigger containers, smaller containers, things like that. And thanks so much for that. It always helps us when we're doing our lives if people give us, a, give us thumbs up. It's, it's just helpful for us. And then I've been doing more research on Arizona gardening things I can actually grow that I wasn't really sure if I could grow because there's not that dormant season like apples. Apples need that cold season. And it, but there are a few apples that actually only need like a hundred hours of coolness and not really cold, just coolness. And so I thought I could try some of those. Mary says, I use my ink pad on my phone with a check mark with everything I need when I go on vacation to take with me. That's a good idea. I do have, I don't have ink pad, but I do have this section on my phone that's notes. And I could do that same kind of thing. But 
Marianne, yours is ink pad. Is that an iPhone or is that a, um, just a smartphone? Because if it's just an app, I could probably find that and add it to my phone. Cause that would be real helpful. You know, right now I just put a rubber band around here and it's, it's in my purse or it's on my desk. So when I'm doing everything, but it's interesting. You just have to have the right varieties of berries and fruits, but I am going to plant some bananas. And I'm going to do a row of bamboo. There's bamboo that really spreads. And then there's bamboo that's pretty, you know, it doesn't really spread and it, or it clumps. And so I'd like to do some of that. Um, Mary says iPhone can download it for free. I don't have an iPhone, but I will look and see if there's something similar that I can download on my phone. So thanks, Mary. Anything that makes it easier, you know, but it's interesting when you start living in two different places, things that I didn't realize, things that you have to do every single spring and fall. So last week I took time and I did my changing my mail address. I got my mail address on my phone or not on my phone uh, at here at the house. I could do right online, but to verify they want a credit card and they charge you a dollar and 10 cents. Why? They could charge you 20 cents. Why do they charge you a dollar and 10 cents? But when I went to do my PO box, I couldn't do that because it, my, P.O. box is not associated with my credit card. And so it just wouldn't do it. So I just had to go to the post office and fill out the form and give it back to them. That's just something you have to do each time. When you have your internet, we have Spectrum, but luckily there's Spectrum down in Yuma. So all I have to do is call and say, okay, we're leaving on this day. Will you switch our internet here in Wyoming to what they call seasonal? And it costs you $4.99 a month. And that way you're not paying a disconnect and a connect fee. It's actually cheaper and it's easier for them. And in the same conversation, the guy could start mine in Arizona at the same time. So that was nice because it was the same company. And other than a, a little bit of hold time, it was really pretty easy. Now then it has water. Now down in Arizona, we never turn the water off because I have a solar system that waters my citrus. So twice a week, it floods the, I have this, these circles around my fruit trees and they're about, oh, they're about a foot deep. They're really pretty deep. My dad made fun of me that they were so deep and it just fills it up with water two times a week and it, and it just dissipates into the sandy soil and it waters my trees. And our neighbors said my trees are doing good. So I hope they know what they're talking about. I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. <laughs> oh, and you can see Nightbot is doing its job. Um, anybody that's a member that has a YouTube channel, it will pop you up. So that's very cool. I don't do it with the people that don't have YouTube channels because I don't want any kind of invasion of their personal stuff. So it's just the people that actually make videos. So if you become a member and you don't see that happening, send me a note because maybe somehow I did something wrong or you're a new member and I haven't put it, put you in yet. So that just helps, but it's supposed to just pop up like every eight or 10 minutes, different people. So, um, like Monty's in motion won't, you won't see again for like 10 minutes, but it's nice that during the live, it will do that. And I appreciate all my members. And so I, anything I can do for them, I like to do it. Now, electricity. We keep our electricity on all year here, but not in Arizona. So um, because here it gets too cold, I have to have some kind of heat in the house. So we set all of our thermostats at 55 degrees. And see that fern back there? That's the only plant I left in the house when we went to Arizona. I mean, and it is in a huge pot, you know, it's huge. And I watered it really good and it's so heavy. And I said to Joe, either it lives or it doesn't live. 
And it looked wonderful when we got back home. And I thought, there must be water in it too much. <laughs> I mean, and this summer it has just went crazy. But I think with the 40 or the 55 degrees in here and the house is all closed off, it gets some light through the blinds during the day. It was just perfect. Well, hello. Is this the first time that you have been in one of my lives? I think it might be. So thanks for stopping by. And today we're talking about living in two different places at one time. Well, not at one time, but two different places in a year. So we're about to leave. And so I've got the spectrum and I've got the electricity and the water all fixed and my um, mail all fixed. All the insurances, I don't have to do anything with it. And most of our, our bills are all, you get an email, you know, or it's automatically paid. So really we get less and less mail all the time. I mean, you still get your junk mail and you get your stuff from family and friends and stuff like that. But it's really a lot less mail than we used to get. So that is always interesting. And in fact, I think some of the things that, you know, some of the junk mail that you get, they don't forward that. And so it just gets sent back to the company. And I think it probably you just get off their list, which I think that's kind of nice because I hate throwing away stuff. Though you can take junk mail, send it through your shredder and use it in your garden. Almost all inks and colored inks now are vegetable based. And so it's not like it used to be where it could hurt your gardens. Almost everything, like every newspaper in the United States is all vegetable based ink. So you can use that. And a lot of the printed, the color printed ones are vegetable based now too. I suppose it's cheaper for them to produce when it's vegetable based anyway, and better for the environment. So I kind of like that. Now we are busy pulling things from the garden. The other day we pulled some squashes and pumpkins, things like that over at the community garden. And Jason is here. Hello, how are ya? And we had 286 pounds of pumpkins and squash and zucchini. That was a good harvest day. And that's not all of my squashes. It, it's most of them at the community garden, but I still have ones at here. Now, when we come back from Arizona this spring, I'm not going to do the community garden anymore. One of the things I learned when you're living in two places, because we're going to Arizona and I have a garden down there. So I don't have to produce as much in both places because, you know, you have all your fresh, fresh vegetables here. And when I go to Arizona, though, there's a little leg, though, I am going to bring some of my squash down there. Um, you start again and I have little tiny tomato plants growing and I'm going to dig up some of my small peppers and I'm going to bring those with me. So it's, you know, you just don't have to grow as much. Now where we go is Yuma, Arizona and Yuma, Arizona is the sunniest city in the entire world. It, it's known for it. It's in the Guinness world record. It's the sunniest city in the entire world, not the hottest city, but the sunniest. It has more sunshine throughout the year than any other place. Um, Jason, I'm glad you guys are doing good. Good. And Brandy and Charlie, how is Charlie feeling? Is he better? 50% better? 75% better? He was in the hospital. So there was a lot of prayers going across the country for him. And he is home now. So I was very excited that he was home. Um, may you find some other person to take care about the other garden? Um, usually by the time we're ready to go, um, to Arizona, it, our garden season in Wyoming really ends in September and we don't go till October to Arizona. So it works out. Okay. Um, what do you grow in your gardens? Um, Arizona gardens. I grow everything that I grow here because when we get to Arizona, it'll be in the nineties in Yuma, where we live last winter, the coldest we saw was 48 degrees. 
Um, and that was at night. It was 48 degrees was the coldest that we saw. Now, can it frost in Yuma? It can. Th their frost dates are two weeks in January that it's possible to frost. So it's really um, nice that you can grow anything. And if it's going to be cold those days, those days, I just cover things. And we're actually going to build a little greenhouse down there. But we grow tomatoes and peppers and cabbages and squash and carrots and lettuce and Swiss chard, all the things that we like up here. So, and a lot of things are fast growing, like a lot of the lettuces and things like that. So you get stuff right away. And they have great um, farmer's markets down there. And it, it's really easy to get produce. One of the things that I found down there, um, hi, Greenback Girl, how are you? Nice to see you. Sorry, we were just going to say hi to everybody. I was just telling my husband about snowboarding. Let's, let's talk about snowboarding. Now, my parents have gone down to Arizona for easily 25 years. After they retired, um, my mom was a school teacher. My dad was a fireman. And my dad also does cabinet making. My mom had gotten into an accident over 25 years ago. And so now in the cold, her hands would hurt. So um, they decided my aunt was going down there anyway, my, my dad's sister. And so they checked out different places in Arizona first. And then they picked out... Um, Yuma, Arizona, because that's where my aunt was. And it helped my mom. And so they have asked us and asked us for, I don't even know how long, um, to come down here after we retired. I mean, we would go visit, but we hadn't really thought of living in two places because though Joe liked the idea, I didn't want to live in two places. And a lot of times I think people think, um, oh, your husband is a fire, a fireman. That's awesome. Um, and Charlie says, I'll be happy when I get stronger so I can plant again. I can totally understand that. Um, sorry, I go back and forth because <laughs> I love to read the comments while they're popping through. Um, a lot of times people think that you have to have a lot of money to, to live in two different places. So they don't think they can snowboard and snowbird. But, a, and I don't know about every place, but in Yuma, Arizona, when you go to the grocery store, everything is cheaper. The meat is way cheaper. And if you, um, you, I think you should try it first. I don't think you should go down and have bought something before you try it because you may not like it or you may not like that area or the, and that's why my parents tried a few different places before they decided on Yuma. But when in the little village where we live, it, a lot of the trailers are older, you know, or modular homes. It depends on what, which lot it is. But like last winter, there were ones for sale for, $30,000 or $40,000. And that counted the land. And in the little village that we have, that we have our little place, it costs you, of course, you have your taxes from the, um, the city, you know, um, your property taxes. $150 a year is what I pay for property taxes. Our homeowners association is $150 a year, not a month, a year. Now, that's not true out of every place, but where I live, that is true. And so we own our little place outright, and $300 for that. Our insurance is $500 a year. And then just our living expenses, you know, our utilities and our food or going places, it is, that is not expensive. Now, if you bought a great big house, you're going to have two house payments, but we don't want to do that. And I'm totally okay with just living in that little tiny, um, you know, our little house. It's about, I think it's 16 feet by about 60 feet. So it's, a, it's not tiny, tiny. 
Um, it has two bedrooms, a bathroom and, you know, all this stuff. And it is fun. It's kind of like camping all winter long. <laughs> camping in something bigger. So, um, Jason says, do you have ac access kiln in Arizona? I'm actually going to bring my kiln with me to Arizona. And I'm going to bring my little microwave kilns that I did a video on um, that popped up yesterday on my other channel. And so that will be fun. Um, Charlie says, my sister has a home in Scottsdale and one in Minnesota. Now, Scottsdale is a very beautiful place and it is very spendy, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure there's spots that aren't, but there is, um, you know, it just depends on what you want. Now I know people that live here in Gillette and they have big houses down in Arizona, but I don't want a big payment. And so it just depends on what you want to do. Um, let's see, I would like to send you pictures of garden flowers and fruits. If I can have your email. Um, yes, let me put up one of my banners across. that has my email. Okay, so that has my Etsy store and it has my email. So that send me pictures. I would love to see that. Just so exciting. Um, oh, Jamie's here. How are you? Are you feeling better that later this summer than you were at the beginning of the summer? I hope so. Yeah, she was having some health stuff. So Janie, I hope you are better. You know I pray for you all the time. Totally. Um, I'm going to see what I missed. Sometimes the um, chat goes too fast and then you're talking and you're looking at the camera and you're trying to look over here and it's it can be hard to do. And I don't want to miss anybody that popped in that I didn't see. Um, oh. We live full time in an RV. Husband is a volunteer fire department, traveling, operating room technician. That is interesting. And how do you like living in an RV? When my parents retired, my mom wanted to buy an RV and just go different places. My dad didn't want to do that. And my dad's idea, is, this is what he says to my mom. I didn't work all these years and save all this money for me to make, um, have to make my own breakfast. And I thought, you never make your own breakfast. My mom makes your breakfast for you. What difference does it make? <laughs> but um, they really like, they have a double wide and then it has an awning on one side. It's a modular uh, awning on one side with a patio. And then the, on the other side, they have this screened in porch thing and they have a garage over on, on part of their property and they live right next to us. In fact, the little place that we have now, um, they used to just rent out to people and they'd have people from Canada and different places around the country that would rent for the winter because a lot of times people don't want to buy. They just want to rent for the, the winter. And I think it's a good way to see if you like someplace. So that's always interesting. Um, and she says, we will have to leave whenever it will snow. I want to get a home base and volley between the two places so we can build a life rather than nomad for around forever. I can understand that. Um, in our little village in Yuma, there are three spots for people with RVs so that they can just do that. Otherwise, there are people that have their little modulars or trailers, and then they bring their RV down and they actually live in their little house versus their RV. There's just lots of options to do. And where we live, it's about 15 minutes if you wanted to go to Mexico, though Mexico is closed, so we haven't been gone over there. You can go in if you have any kind of essential thing, like, um, oh, you have a doctor's appointment or a dentist that you use in Mexico, things like that. <laughs> One of the ladies down there, she goes over there to get her hair cut. And I said to her, I, I'm not sure that would be considered essential. And she goes, it's essential to me. <laughs> and so she goes over there and gets her hair cut. And they let her in and out. They, I guess they probably don't even ask what she's doing. And <laughs> Janie says, I'm doing very well and am actually able to tie my shoes. Oh, that is good. That is so good. I'm so excited for you. Good, good, good. Um, I love RV living is a home base though. Um, 
consider Yuma, Arizona. It is a fun place. There, Yuma's normal population is about 100,000 people. When the snowbirds come down, it's anywhere from 200,000 to 250,000 people. Now, last year, it wasn't quite as many because a lot of the Canadians didn't come down. But it, Yuma is very spread out, so it doesn't seem like this crazy, busy, big city. And it really stretches a long ways, and then it goes into the foothills, which isn't actually Yuma anymore, but it's just continuous. And then in the deserts, all, all the way around, um, there people can just camp. They, and then they have... Um, businesses that come out and refill your water and they refill, um, they do the sanitation. And um, a lot of that is public land. It doesn't cost you anything to park there. So uh, that's kind of interesting. You're on the interstate and you just see all these massive things of RVs and tents. And it's just what you want to do. You know, what people want to do. I would rather have an actual house than living in a tent all all winter long, but a lot of people do it. It's totally up to them what they want to do. And, um, oh, good. You're going to send pictures. Good, good, good. Thank you for that. I love seeing other people's gardens. I often wish that on YouTube, when you're making a comment, you could put a photo, but that's not something that they have that they don't let you do that yet, but maybe sometime they will let you do that. Because it would be really interesting. People ask me a question about a certain thing, and I'd like to put a, a photograph. Now, I can always send them an email or a text message. But sometimes I would like to do that. Um, Yuma is a very nice place. They have a lot of history. And the Colorado River goes right on the edge of Yuma. And then it has all the canal systems that water all kinds of stuff. And you see literally fields and fields and fields of things that are growing. Because Yuma County is the lettuce capital of the world. They just grow so much lettuce and they grow broccolis and cauliflowers and cabbages. And just it's just fields and fields. It's really interesting to drive through there and see everything. And then, um, oh, Molly's here. Hi, Molly. How are you? Molly can make a very mean cake. Man, you should see all the cakes and stuff that she does. Oh, it's just fabulous. Um, we have been to Sedona. Um, uh, we've been a lot of places in Arizona. We have um, one son that lives there now, but we used to have two sons that lived there. And so we've been to Arizona lots of times between seeing them, seeing my parents. Um, we have friends down in Arizona. So we've been there lots of times. And there are some beautiful places. But when we were deciding what to do, and, you know, because my parents wanted us to go to Yuma, I didn't really want to go to Yuma, but I really didn't want to live in two places. So <laughs> um, we um, looked at a lot of different places. But my thinking was, if I'm leaving Wyoming, so I don't have snow and I don't have frost and I'm going to be able to garden, I want to be in the sunniest place I can be. And so Yuma was a perfect spot. And then, you know, my parents are older. My dad is 90 years old and my mom is 84. And the idea that I could spend the winters with them, because they live in South Dakota in the summertime. So I see them a few times, you know, because we go over to South Dakota at least two times a month. I could, and I see them, but I could really, you know, if, if for some reason they're, their health situation changed because they're really healthy right now. They don't really have any problems, but I would be there where in South Dakota, my brother lives right next to them on, on the property right next to them. So he can, if something happened, he would be right there. So I just thought, I don't know how long I will have my parents and I would like to be able to do something to help them. And so that's why, um, that was a, another major factor. Hi, Linda. How are you? I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to, to, glad to see you. 
And Laura says, I've been to the Lettuce Festival. It was so neat. It, it's interesting down there. They have a lot of activities and things to do. And of course, last year and the year before were a little bit different just because of all the stuff. But things are, you know, much more open and they get to, to do things. And um... oh, <laughs> Mary, I, I totally understand that. And she's saying to Molly that, sorry, it took me so long to get to all your amazing videos. She has a, a lot of amazing videos. But I totally understand that because there are so many fun, amazing channels on YouTube. And it's hard to watch them all. It is. It's totally hard to watch, to get through them all. And you feel bad. And look who's here. Jason, how are you? Now, Jason is my very special friend. Um, he has a YouTube channel that you should definitely check out. And he does such amazing stuff. And I have to tell you, he has the best, most amazing chicken coop I have ever seen. I think it's a chicken palace. And he shows you everything about it, how to do everything. Hi, Jen. How are you? I love it that people just pop in and out. Debbie, how are you? So nice to see you. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Um, but you can always scroll up and down. And Nightbot is showing you um, some of the channels that are in here today, too. And other ones, too. Um, Molly says, oh, my gosh, I love chicken coops and chickens. Molly, you have to go look at Homesteading Northern Michigan. He has a series on when he's building this chicken coop. And it is just like this amazing piece of engineering. And then he's added, lately he's added um, water catchments to it. And so he shows you how to, he did all that. And then it goes down from the water catchment into um, a system that automatically waters gives water to the chickens and as they need it it's there it it's really pretty ingenious and so that is very cool charmaine how are you did you get my package i hope you did already she was one of my winners on my other channel fuse glass artwork and she she won charmaine you won the dragonfly because each week on Friday, like later this afternoon, I'm giving away a little fused bowl. And so each week on Friday, I give it something away. And Molly says, I need to get my husband to make me one. Ha <laughs> ha. But it's not legal in my area. Well, talk about being chickens legal and not legal. I have had chickens in my backyard for a very long time. But when we decided to go to Arizona, I though I did have a family that said they would come over every day and water them. It was, I just thought that was a lot to ask in the winter time, especially if we got very much snow at all. And so I gave all my chickens away and I gave all my rabbits away. So where I used to let all my rabbits and my chickens, I would give them all of the things I was pulling out of my garden. And in fact, a couple of years, I would stack it in the hoop house put the chickens and the rabbits in there and just let them eat all winter long. But now I don't have that. So now I have to figure out a way, you know, because my compost piles are already full and I still have a lot of stuff to do this week. So that is something when you live in two places, you have to consider. And so when I'm considering how many vegetables to grow, I have to say, okay, um, I'm growing those vegetables in Arizona too. So I don't have to have, I don't have to can and do a lot of things that of stuff we would have ate all winter because I'm going to grow that again. So it's a whole different mindset. And this summer when I, or this spring, when we came back, I did my regular stuff. I had my community gardens. I had my gardens here. Um, I had things in pots. I have way too much food. And I seriously have been giving pounds and pounds and pounds of vegetables away. 
And it's like, I had to switch my whole way of thinking and go, okay, I, I don't need to plant this much. I don't need to do that. Um, Molly's asking, do you fly to Arizona or drive? We are driving because we're still in that phase of, we only, we don't have another vehicle down there though. I tried to talk Joe into towing our car down there so that we would, but he didn't want to do that. So I think we'll just end up probably buying a vehicle down there. Um, but th I'm still bringing things down. And if I flew, I couldn't do that. And I think we will probably drive down for a while, a few more years. You know, I mean, my parents drove down there um, for probably other than the last five years. They mostly drove down there every single time. And my dad always says, I'm retired. I can take as long as I want to um, drive down there. So if they would take three days, four days, five days, they didn't care. They have friends all the way down that route that they would just stop and see. So it worked out really good for them, but we're still bringing tools and different things. And I'm bringing my kilns down there. And I'm hoping that, um, that channel will be successful enough that I can actually leave that kiln down there and just, um, purchase another one for up here. So that is my hope. Um, and Todd is my newest member. So Todd, I just so appreciate that. And Nancy is here. And Nancy's saying, good afternoon, everybody, because where she lives, it is afternoon. Where I live, it is still morning. And Arizona has, doesn't change their time. It's, I think Arizona and Hawaii, I think are the only two states that don't change at daylight savings time. And so right now they are at California time. So they're at hour behind us. But then when the time changes, which is, I think it's late this year. I think it's not till like the first week in November that it's changing. Um, we, we will be the same time as Wyoming. So that's kind of weird. I just always have to remember. Um, will you eventually live in Arizona? Well, there are some good points of living in Arizona all year round, except for over 100 degrees all summer long, which that's a little warm. But I did tell Joe that we could always eventually, not yet, but eventually we could um, sell our house in Wyoming, buy a camper. And in the summertime, when it's so hot in Arizona, we could just travel all over the place, which that would be kind of fun. So I'm still getting my gardens. I told him that he would have the ability to try out all kinds of golf courses that he would have never been able to golf otherwise. So I don't know, but I, I don't see that happening in the next five years, but there are a lot of people that live year round. Um, in our little village, the person to the left lives there all year round. The, the little gal behind us does. And in our little cul-de-sac, the, all the other people in the cul-de-sac live there all year round. So I think it just really depends on what you want to do. So, well, look at here. Becky's here. She's catching my first live. I have friends and family in Arizona, and I envy the fact they don't do um, daylight savings time. I think daylight savings time is kind of silly. I can see the idea. When it very first started, it helped the farmers and ranchers. But anymore, I don't think it makes any difference. And... That another interesting thing, when you go to Arizona, like right now, it was 730 last night and it was pitch black. It has already started getting dark early. When we get down to Arizona, it's not like that. And I, I'm sure it's because we're so much more south. But we used to go walking all the time at eight o'clock at night and it was still a light out. So that's it's it's interesting. And plus the fact they don't change their time. And that makes a difference. So um, Molly says up in Flagstaff is nice and not so hot. That is true. And we have friends that live by Flagstaff. But it also snows. And I don't want, if I am coming down south, I don't want any snow. <laughs> I just don't. Um, a lot of times when, um, in September, we will get a snowstorm. Though this September, it doesn't look like we're going to get one. Um, last year, we got eight, eight or 10 inches in September and another 10 inches in October before we left. 
when we come back in April, we will get lots of snowstorms. So I still get snow. I'm just not going to have snow um, during those times. Well, he says, I hate daylight savings time. Uh, I don't like it either. Like here in Wyoming, once it, it starts, it is dark at about five o'clock. And I don't like that. And when Joe used to work at the mine, he would go to work when it was dark and he came home when it was dark. And that's not fun. You don't, you don't have any time whatsoever to um, see the sunshine. I don't like that. Um, they say it is a safety issue for kids in the morning when waiting for school buses. Uh, that, that could be. Because a lot of the school buses, um, when they're picking them up, they're picking up, them up way early in the morning, you know, especially if they have to drive very far to go to the schools. You know, they live out of town. I could see that, that that is legitimate, you know. Um, um, Molly says, I can understand. <laughs> in Illinois, there's a lot of snow. There is a lot of snow and you have heavy snow. We sometimes have heavy snow but not, not like um, where there's more humidity. Our snow is much drier. I mean, it's still good for making a snowball, but it's much drier. And Karen is here. Karen is one of my members. She is famous. I tell everybody that she's famous because she's the first female chef at Benihana's ever. She's famous, but she is one heck of a cook. And so in her channel, she has lots of things. In fact, she made this banana bunt cake that I watched the video. It was so amazing. So amazing. I'm, I, I wrote down the recipe. I'm going to make it. Um, Roy's Homestead Bees. And I think this is the first time you've been in one of my lives. You know, I have bees. I love bees. In fact, I am harvesting honey tomorrow. And um, Brian at Castle Hives and I are trading honey. Because I like to try other people's honey just to see what it, because Every place, different flowers, different um, taste. I, I just like it. I like trying it. So, Roy, if you would like to try, um, um, trade some honey, I would be totally up for that. You could send me an email. Um, I can't stay long, but I just wanted to thank you for the great vanilla extract how-to video. Oh, thank you. Um Yesterday, I just started my series on vanilla bean recipes. So yesterday, we made, the video was on vanilla bean coffee creamer. On uh, next Thursday, because it's every Thursday morning, the video will pop up, is vanilla bean ice cream. Because I make a lot of homemade ice cream. And so I'm totally excited about that one. And we're going to make cheesecakes and puddings and just all kinds of stuff that you can put a vanilla bean in. So if you would like that kind of stuff, that would be great. Um, Molly says it's hard to do videos when it gets dark at four ish in the winter. That's true. It, you know, it's, it can be challenging. Totally. Yeah. I totally understand that. And, um, oh, everybody's saying hi to everybody. That's, I just love that in a live. Um, Molly says you simply make it, you simply ma must make it that, that cake. Oh, I am going to make that cake. I have the recipe right here. And I love bananas. I love banana bread, banana cakes. I have this really old fashioned banana cake that is just, whew, um, just lovely. Oh, and she says that she had like five people message me that they made it and loved it. Even a lady for her hundredth birthday. Oh, don't you just love you too, Karen? That you people tell you these things. I just love that about YouTube. It's just fabulous. Um, Roy says every year I get some honey that has a lemon flavor. Roy, where are you guys at that you, um, is it, is it getting the honey from like lemon balm or are, are there citrus trees by where you live? That is interesting. I'd like to bring one of my beehives down to Arizona, but they don't let you have that in the, the village. I might have to work on that. I might have to get on the board and see if I can get that change that you could have honeybees there. Because right down the road, there is this humongous big cactus. You know, the brain dead. Can't think of what they're called. You know, it's really tall, has the big arms. Anyway, in the top of it, 
uh, a woodpecker must have pecked holes in there. And there's a beehive in there. And you can watch the bees go in and out all day long. It's really interesting. And so I would bet with all the citrus trees by where I live, they probably um, have a lemony flavor or a citrus flavor anyway. Um, oh. Sorry, I have to scroll back up. Um, what is going on with your vanilla extract? Have you tried it yet? Oh, okay. So I did a video with, I was making regular vanilla extract, my regular stuff that I always make. And then I made um, one with a, a rum, a spiced rum. I have not tried it yet because one of my subscribers that's actually over in England, um, his birthday is December 5th. And he asked me months and months ago if I would do the video when I try it on his birthday. So on December 5th, I'm going to do the video for that. So a lot of people ask me, did you try it? Did you like it? Um, because I had never made spiced rum vanilla before. And so I'm really actually pretty excited because people say that it is really good. I don't know. So December 5th is when that video will come up because I promised him and it was nice of him to ask and he does a lot of comments on my videos. And so I, I was totally okay with doing that. And I love it when people know each other and they're just talking, talking to each other. And oh, it goes too fast. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll through. Um, Todd says, I love packages, not bills. <laughs> That's true. That's what Joey says. I love going to the post office. I do. I love going to my mailbox, the PO box. Because I tell him, you never know what you're going to get. Joe says, I'm not going there. What if I get bills? I don't want to go there. I tell him, he's looking at it in the wrong way. <laughs> because you never know what you might get. Um, Molly says, I love it. I love that. I know all of you from YouTube. See, that's just so fun. And it, you get a lot of interaction when you have a live chat. And you get, a, you know, because a lot of times um, you have your video up and it, you have lots of comments and you're trying to get through the comments and you don't get to talk as much as you would like to otherwise. And um, let's see, Roy says, I live in Rome, Georgia. I live in the country. So um, they could have some citrus because there are some citrus that are hardy uh, that they could probably grow in Georgia. Um, lemon balm and a lot of different herbs that are lemony might contribute to that. So that's interesting. Oh, and Molly says that December 5th is her mom's birthday. She would have been 83. Yeah, but um, I, I, I think it's, you know, even, I mean, I have both my parents, but I can see actually me kind of celebrating um, my parents after they're gone too. You know, it's not, it's not something you ever forget you know, and, um, and Jason's birthday is December 1st. And I have that marked on my calendar, actually. And his wife's birthday is pretty soon coming up. I think it's next month or in November. I have to look on my calendar. I have all my members' birthdays that if they've given them to me, I have them on my calendar. Um, Todd's leaving. So Todd, thank you so much for stopping by. And so my take over all in all on living in two different places is um, I enjoy it. Um, I, the things that I miss living in two different places is because in the winter time, that was always my time that I could really read a lot of books because it was cold out. I didn't have to do anything outside. I did a lot of sewing projects because it's cold. And so you just have to um, just, you know, you do things inside where when you live in two places where it's very nice in both places, um, you have more to do. Um, Jen says, I have to sign off soon, but I just wanted to say thank you. I've enjoyed my first YouTube live. Oh, fun. Drive safe home on your trip to Yuma and say hi to your parents from me. Second cousin, Jen. So thanks so much, Jen. I appreciate that. And I will tell mom and dad that. So fun. Well, everybody, I am way past what my usual time is. But there won't be any live 
next Friday, probably, because we will actually be packing our truck. And I might do a video on how I pack everything because I'm a pretty good packer. Joe would get half the, the amount of stuff in the truck as I can get in there. So thank you, everybody. I would, um, um, one last comment. Molly says I would have a hard time somewhere warm in Christmas. You should see how much they decorate in Yuma, Arizona. In fact, they have this street that people walk up and down and they have Santa Claus and the decorations are just like, whoa, mind blowing. Um, but um, that was hard that when we didn't have snow, you know, that crisp stuff, that Christmas in the, in the air. And that was hard, but that's just the way, way it is. And we can always fly back home for Christmas if we want to and see all, you know, see some of the kids and grandkids, but everybody, I just so appreciate it. I thank you. Um, we will, um, October 5th, I actually have, um, a live scheduled on how we got, you know, how everything was when we were traveling down to Arizona. And then I will be back on my regular Friday mornings after that. So everyone, thank you so much. Thanks. Um, make sure you check out the different YouTube channels that are in the live chat. Every single one of them you will like. I just adore them. So everybody, thanks so much. And I will see you soon.